x minus 2 is less than or equal to 1. I can put those things together and make a large compound inequality out of that. Have we seen stuff like this before? Yeah. This is why we did it. Right? Because I knew we were going to get this, this situation with our absolute value inequalities. Hey, can you solve this in one step? Yeah, yeah instead of dealing with two different inequalities, with your and, or your less than or equal to, or your less than absolute value inequalities, you can set this up like this and do it in one step. We have our three sections. How are you going to solve this, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, if we do that to all three sides, we will have 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3. What's awesome about this is you can go directly to your interval notation. Where's this interval start, folks? Where's the interval end? Three. Am I going to use brackets or parentheses here? Yeah, you've got to be good on that. Make sure you're using brackets when you use brackets. Okay. Now, this is kind of annoying to have to go through this whole thing every single time, right? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that to you. Do you understand how you can go through this every single time, though? I want you to be, be with it on this. Do you understand where these two things are coming from, folks? Yes. This one, you don't change anything. This one, you change the sign, and you flip the inequality. Not to have you okay with that. That's a must that you have to understand that. After this was some manipulation, I picked it off the board and I reversed it, just like I did over there. I noticed that these are exactly the same expression. My inequalities are facing the same way. That means I can mash them together and get this expression. Why am I doing that? Well, hey, that's easier to solve, right? All I have to do is add 2 to all three sides, and I'm done with my problem. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Now, instead of doing this every time, we can understand that there's a shortcut with these type of inequalities. So here's what I need you to know. Pay okay, attention for you. Any time, any time you have a, an absolute value with a less than or a less than or equal to, any time you have a less than or a less than or equal to, something, some number. Do you guys see that we'd be able to do this exactly the same way as these examples? Do you see that? Every, every time. If we have this symbol, we can write it ultimately as this. We had x minus 2 less than 1. We were able to, at the very end, write this as negative 1 less than x minus 2 less than 1. We could do that. We had absolute value of x less than 4. We were able to write that as negative 4 less than x less than 4. We can do this every single time. So when you see a less than, it's going to signify an and inequality. Less than is and, or less than or equal to is and. And we can solve it this way. You know, a lot of people ask, they go, uh, they say Mr. Leonard, but wait a second. I thought you were going to have two inequalities, and one of them you don't flip the sign, but the other one you do. And then you, you, a lot of people ask me, but wait a second, aren't you not flipping the sign here? Aren't you not flipping the sign? And the answer is yes, you are. I want you to look very carefully at this. You do flip that inequality around. You guys are with me on that, right? But then you flip it back around when you change that. Does that make sense? So is this flipped around? The answer is yeah, it is. It's just you're writing it backwards so it doesn't look that way. Is this one flipped around? Yes. But remember, we flipped it back when we wrote it in the re reverse order. So are these ones written backwards of this? It, it actually is. It is, but you're flipping it back around. You write it in reverse. That's what makes it look like it's not. Flip one side. You, flip, you, you don't flip this one at all. You do flip this one. However, when we're writing this in our shortcut method, we, we flip it back around. So it doesn't look like we're flipping it. <clears throat> So what this all leads to is this idea. We can do a nice shortcut here. If we have an absolute value that's less than or less than or equal to some number, we can write this as 
negative, we're changing the sign. We're flipping the inequality, but we're flipping it back. X is less than A. Let's try a couple examples to really get the hang of this. Would you like to do that? Okay. I need you to be rock solid on these two questions. First, does it does it fit the inequality or the, the I'm sorry, does it fit the criteria for doing this for a shortcut? Does it fit the shortcut method? Or in other words, is it an and inequality? Yes. 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 This means and. This means that you're gonna have the our less than less than equal to means our and. It fits the criteria because it is our less than. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. This is less than. In the little while, we're gonna have greater than. It's not gonna fit this. We're not gonna be able to do the same thing. So you need to really kind of get that with the less than or less than or equal to, we can do this. If it's not this way, we cannot do this. Imagine if you're with me on that. Okay. So since this fits our criteria, let's do what this shortcut says can do. What's the first thing we're going to write then in this case? What now? Negative three. Negative three. So this says that I can write negative a a and put x in the middle of it, basically is what that says. So I'm going to take my, in this case, a is 3. So I'm going to put negative 3. Remember that, folks, what we're really doing is we're writing two inequalities, right? We really are. Look at Here's one of them. Here's another. We're just mashing them together. So we still have to write two inequalities. We're still doing inequalities the same way. We're writing the positive of that number and the negative of that number. So we are still going to write negative 3. And we're going to write 3. What goes in the middle of those things? If you're a little confused on this, pay attention up here, okay? Now, did you, did you kind of buy into the fact that we need two inequalities? Did you buy into the fact that one of them's got to be positive, one's going to be negative? Same thing as you did with your equation on your homework. Did you follow me that one inequality we keep exactly the same, but the other one we have to flip it around because we're changing the sign? Keep on in that. Now I want you to watch what happens. We are going to make two inequalities here. Check this out. Ignore this for a second. Can you see that this is our first inequality? Oops. That's not. That's not our first one. That one is. Can you see that that's our first inequality? Okay, you ready? Now, ignore this side for a second. Can you see that I'm going to flip this around and make it, I would have made it going this way, right? But it would have been y plus 1 is greater than negative 3. True? Now, in order to get it to this form, I have to pick it off the board and flip it around. True? That's going to change us back to this way. That's why that's that direction. Does that make sense? So, am I making two inequalities when I do this? Yes, here's one, here's two. Am I changing the signs of the numbers? Yes, here it is. Am I writing this in the reverse order? Yes, I am, but I'm flipping it back around when I write this in this particular way. Raise your hand if you understand that. Good, you have to understand all those ideas that I'm writing two inequalities, that one's positive, one's negative, and that I'm flipping the sign when I make that negative, flipping the inequality when I make that negative. But why do we do it this way? Well, this is a lot easier to solve than doing two inequalities. It, and it's already an interval notation. That's what we like. So when we do this problem, how do I get y by itself, folks? Okay, let's do that. Negative 4. I'm not going to change any inequalities. y less than 2. That's beautiful. It's already set up an interval notation for me. Don't have to do anything else. All I have to do is tell where it starts. Tell where it ends, use the appropriate symbols, and we're good. Like it? Not too bad, right? Not too bad. You just have to remember one thing. With this less than or less than or equal to, you can do this. If this is not less than or less than or equal to, you can't do this. 
Let's try, uh, let's try one more together. I'll give you a couple to do on your own. And we'll continue. <coughs> Okay, write that one down and then take a good long look at it. Now, after you take a good long look at that, that should look kind of familiar to you from your homework. What's the first thing you might want to do here? Subtract two. Wait, say it again? Subtract two. Why subtract two? Aha. Uh -huh. So the same rules apply. Same rules. Remember on your equations on your homework how you isolated the absolute value? You got it to the absolute value first before you made your two equations. Same thing happens here. You cannot go directly to this part if you do not have an absolute value all by itself. So just like with your equations, hey, isolate the absolute value. I said the absolute value first, so of course, yeah, in this case we're going to subtract 2. That's a really important point. If you don't do that, one side is going to be off. Your left side of your, your expression is going to be off. So we'll have the absolute value of 2x minus 5 less than or equal to 7. Okay, everybody up here, uh, is our shortcut going to work for this problem? Is this an and inequality? Yeah. Yes. Look at That's the shortcut right there. That says it's less than or less than or equal to. That means that instead of doing my two inequalities separately, I can make two inequalities together. Tell me how to start this. What number do I write first? Mm -hmm. What symbol now? And again, last time I'm going to explain this. Even though this looks the same, we are writing it backwards. It's just we're writing it in the reverse order, so it flips it back around. Now, do you have to be okay with that? Okay. And what goes in the middle? 2x is less than or equal to what? Seven. Good. That we can solve pretty easily. How do we solve that? Add five plus seven. So add five pretty much everywhere. I know this is negative two, less than or equal to two x, less than or equal to twelve. And our last step, ladies and gentlemen? Divide Negative. Do I flip the signs around if I divide by 2? No. It's not really division, it's division by a negative that would do that. So negative 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 6. This is great. I want you to use the shortcut because this is already an interval notation practically for you. It's already done. You don't even have to draw a number line. Well, you can if you want to, but this is, this is done for you. Do you see that, right? It's kind of nice. Where does it start? Negative 1. Where's your name? Brackets, parentheses. Brackets, parentheses. Because we have those equal to, we've already done that, that stuff several times. This should be familiar to you. Maybe we can do that. Okay, give one of these a try on your own, would you? Uh, get this homework passed around pretty quick. 